In this video, we're going to be finding out about another Cosmos space project, another project in the Cosmos ecosystem that is going to make a difference to the entire ecosystem in terms of pursuing decentralization and censorship resistance. NordVPN is becoming more than just a VPN. Threat protection will guard your device against malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads, even if you're not connected to a VPN server at the time. Step up your cybersecurity and stay safe. Got crypto? Got a hardware wallet to keep your crypto safe? Then you have to have one of these to keep your seed phrase safe. The Keystone tablet is fireproof, waterproof. You can use it to store 12 word, 18 word, 15 word, 24 word seed phrases. It comes with a full set of letters and everything you need to make sure that your seed phrase never gets destroyed or disappeared. Get one, get two, get three, have multiple copies. Use my affiliate link in the description below. Hi everybody, this is Crypto Rich, working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. Now, before I introduce my guest, what am I gonna do? I am gonna ask you to subscribe to me on bit.ly slash Crypto Rich Odyssey. This is an Odyssey censorship resistant platform all it takes is an email, sign up, no KYC, and you get to earn crypto just for watching videos. How cool is that? Plus, it's censorship resistant because YouTube doesn't like some of the things that I might say. So please follow me there. Also, join my official Telegram announcements channel where I post all my videos. And follow me on Twitter, CryptoRichYT. Hey, Erman, thank you so much for making yourself available. Thank you, Rich, for allowing me to join you in your uh, introduction. Hey, not at all, not at all. And everybody should know we've we've already had a good chin wag, good com for the conversation, good chat for about twenty minutes before we started recording. That's right. And we're going to be talking about AI AIOZ dot network, which is IBC interoperable, all that business. But what is it? Yes. So great question. So AIOZ uh, network is basically think of it as a BitTorrent on blockchain or AWS on blockchain. Right. So AWS means Amazon Web Services. It's basically right. the infrastructure that actually powers the uh, websites of the world. Uh, they're basically a content delivery network. Okay. And that, right. And that our um, project builds yep. uh, application where users can download. If you have a device on a Mac or Window or Ubuntu, uh, the application actually uh, utilizes the computer and use resources in three main areas. Yep. Uh, one, which is storage, which is a HDD and SSD for storage of digital media files. Two, uh, we're doing bandwidth delivery, which is very, very important. It needs bandwidth to push and deliver media files to the dApps. Right? And then we have transcoding, which is um, basically computes of live streaming. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. Now, I what in all that you said, it all sounds great. But the thing that really triggered me, that really got me think, not in a bad way. Right. Right. Stimulated. Oh, oh, BitTorrent on Cosmos. Now, for people who don't know what BitTorrent is, and you may correct me here because you're probably more of a techno whiz than I am, I promise you, is um, BitTorrent it forms part of the original protocol that Satoshi Nakamoto developed to give us Bitcoin. And what BitTorrent is, it's fully decentralized and it allows for file sharing services and Pirate Bay plus some of the others like LimeWire and everything, run on the BitTorrent network. So it's, it's older than Bitcoin, incredibly robust, because despite the hundreds of millions of dollars that have been spent by Hollywood and Bollywood to stop file sharing, they've not been able to because it's decentralized. So that's really, really interesting. That sort of decentralized, so decentralized file sharing decentralized bandwidth sharing and the last one i didn't understand decentralized transcoding right so that uh, is basically one of the uh computes that is that necessary for live streaming whereby you know media files tend to be uh, in compute into diff different resolutions and mm -hmm. that that's required for live streaming because every device is out there are fragmented um fragmented by the com device power fragmented by the internet bandwidth that the device is on while some are on uh, megabits, some are on gigabits, right? So the files need to be transcoded in various, various formats mm -hmm. to fit the I mean, the device uh, playbacks, yeah. So okay. it uses basically GPUs. 
Okay, so so would it mean that I'd be able to broadcast live streams on on AOIZ network? Right, that's our plan into the future. Currently, we have enabled the storage and bandwidth delivery. So transcoding means that we have to enable the GPU on a decentralized manner. Right. Because we we will need to enable it only when we have reached a form of critical mass. Because make no mistake, live streaming is a very very uh, highly intense, resource intensive computational task. Uh, so our nodes needs to be of a certain number, a certain quantity. Currently, we have about fifty thousand nodes uh, that participated in our network, and to do and that's only doing storage and the delivery, you know, at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the the sharing of the bandwidth network is so that the that there's enough bandwidth for the across the network for people to upload files and download files and then from them to be split up and put all over the place because that's how i understand BitTorrent works right so i think in terms of bandwidth what we do essentially is we apply ai in terms of routing so let's say if uh, your particular bandwidth is um, gigabits while mine is megabit our network will recognize that we want to allocate the uh, so-called delivery from your device to the user instead from me, because you've got higher bandwidth. Essentially, we um, be efficient in our routing, in that sense. Okay, okay. And then the um, the, the download is because, it, I suppose like how um, Pirate Bay works and LimeWire and stuff, is that somebody uploads a file, a file, and that file gets split up across the, the Pirate Bay That's or right. LimeWire network, means. and then somebody goes in to download it, and then all those little pieces from across are then downloaded as one file to that person's computer. That, yeah, absolutely right. So uh, typically when an uploader uh, through a DAP, right, they upload, a, let's say, a certain file or certain size, uh, what we do is splice the particular, let's say, one gigabyte into megabytes, and then we split, splice it up, and the segments are distributed across, replicated across these devices that are part of the network. Uh, they can be a factor of 10, it can be a factor of 20, uh, and they're all distributed. So at any one time, uh, there's a slight difference between us and BitTorrent is that the user tend, uh, the BitTorrent tend to keep the entire file inside the device, but we don't. So at any one point, the devices, uh, they don't keep any one main file. It's basically a segment and they're all encrypted. So I cannot, you cannot uh, click on the file and see what's inside the file too. So it's encryption, it's a privacy as well. Okay, okay. Right. So essentially, um, we're creating an ecosystem of uh, devices that are unused to be fully utilized, right? So typically, consumers, you and I, um, are consumers of bandwidth. That means we download. Yeah. And typically, the applications that we use are the uploaders. So there is a disparity, right? One is constantly uploading. The other one, we, the consumer, are constantly downloading, right? Right. So what we built is a project that enables the bandwidth that we subscribe to to not only download, we also upload. And by participating in the network, you allow and the the user will be rewarded with uh, our ecosystem tokens. Yeah. Okay. So the user would would earn for spare capacity. Okay. But in terms of like what you offer. And what you're building, what's the benefit of that to, what's the social benefit of that, apart from those individuals, but on a more communal scale? Right. So from from a large vision, I mean, from a large big picture perspective and the future vision we have is having a community of peer-to-peer nodes everywhere around the world uh, where is neighborly connection. Right? We can, you're my neighbor and then we are part of this network. We can stream to each other uh, the files. Right. And thereby lowering the latency and improving the streaming experience. And we strive for a lower lag into the future as well. Okay. Basically, that's what and, we want to do. Right. And am I right in understanding it, what you're, what you're building is a peer-to-peer censorship-resistant platform that would allow people to share information in a way that can't be captured or regulated by increasingly authoritarian governments. Right. So I think on that note, right, the censorship resistant uh, requires more on the develop uh, decentralized apps, whereby they have their own policy. They will create their own uh, um, terms and conditions. For us, we are the infrastructure layer. We are we are we are taking in 
and storing these files, right? Encrypting it. And our job as the network and the devices that the peer to peer is to uh, provide the service, which is to push right. the files up, right? Okay, okay, very good. Because yours yeah. is a layer one blockchain with, That's right. with smart, I saw that on the website earlier, with smart contract functionality. So then, so that increases the level of decentralization because then other projects can build all sorts of decent, DAPs, decentralized applications that could then fulfill on whatever censorship resistant, egalitarian, freedom loving ethos that they might have. That's right. That's right. So we are basically an uh, infrastructure, middleware, and we support dApps. If you would like to build a certain you know, website or a certain focus, that's on the website that needs to focus on. You know? So for us, we, we are basically a middleware infrastructure, so we support that in right. that way. Yeah. Okay, so supporting freedom and diversity and decentralization and censorship resistance. Hmm. Very good. I like. Okay. All right. Well, thank, thanks for clarifying all that. And you you did say about people being rewarded for tokens. And it and you also cleared up because it's not like you're building a pirate bay or a line wire. You're building the like pirate bay and line wire run on BitTorrent. You're building the the IBC equivalent of BitTorrent. Is is that a fair metaphor? Well, yeah. I mean, you can think of it that way, whereby we are a blockchain which is peer to peer on top of Cosmos SDK. Right. And we, we believe in the Cosmos uh, ecosystem. Uh, basically, the vision is internal blockchains. And yeah. it's very, very suitable for us developers to build a very sovereign, so-called sovereign projects, individual with their own characteristics, right? And uh, one of the more interesting things that we have done is to make it uh, EVM compatible. Right, okay. Now, for those that are, don't understand, EVM compatible Ethereum virtual machine means that uh, Applications can run on the Ethereum network. It's the it's a um, code that can communicate with Ethereum. So like Polygon and also um, Evmos there and um, I, I can't remember, I can't think of any others, but there are others. Finance Smart Chain, there's one. They're all EVM compatible. So then projects can be ported over and from and everything. Okay, okay. So that gives it great functionality, but it also means these drawbacks using Cosmos ecosystem, right? That you're running on the Cosmos. These are the drawbacks that I've noticed with Cosmos compared to Ethereum. Cosmos have, has faster transaction times and seriously cheap transaction fees. You know, what about the gas? You're missing out on gas fees of up to a $20, $30 a time like on Ethereum. I do have my tongue in cheek, by the way. Right. And also with, with the Cosmos ecosystem, there's no risk of load congestion. That's what I've noticed. You know, all the Cosmos ecosystem projects, they're all really, really fast. Apart from Seeking Network, because of the privacy, it's not as fast, but it's still much faster than Ethereum. And that's because of Secret Network's privacy protocol. And they are going to be developing that. So no, no disrespect to Secrecy Network. I hold secret. OK. All right. So, so now <laughs> what? Are the why is your project going to be successful? Why do you think your project is going to be successful? Because compared to any others, right? Because many projects in all sorts of ecosystems they fall by the wayside. So one thinks you're going to have a shot at it, right, Rich? So um, I mean, all I can say is that I believe every project in the in the blockchain space each have their own, I would say, unique selling point mm -hmm. in a way that they all have their own way of uh, target market their own unique selling point. And, the, and ours is basically an AI-powered uh, content delivery network. It's very unique in a sense. It's very few projects that do what we do. I can count by the handful with right. both of my hands. Right. Um, and it's a very challenging, technically challenging like endeavor on its own. We've been building it almost for many years. Uh, to give you a bit more color, uh, AOS is formed about 13 years ago. We are a deep tech company. We're in AI and we're in blockchain. Uh, and w which we started from AI first. And we, we, have, we have written white papers in very, very uh, rank A peer reviewed conferences. And then uh, we also uh, built solutions for uh, corporations, right? They want a very customized, customized solutions because AI is not a one size fit all at the end of the day. And uh, 2017 uh, itself, we started to have a team to build purely on blockchain. Uh, and that we, uh, wanted to have uh, utility, wanted to think, you know, we're developers and we, we wanted to find out how we can, uh, how, I mean, merge this technology or blockchain with something 
of use, right? So we've been in the, I mean, uh, play, uh, playing with video for a long time because AI is really about uh, computer vision and we play a lot of videos and we understand the pain point. I mean, separate on a note, it's just that uh, we wanted to make it a distributed way of storing it so that whenever we want to access it, it can be easily accessible, right? And it's also affordable, right? There's a lower cost of bear, uh, cost of barriers should be lower than what we're doing. So that's what we're trying to do. And that's why I think by having uh, this project that we've built, we believe, right, um, having a decentralized distributed media file storage distribution, uh, it is a very, very um, important, I would say, future for Web3. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to, to bridge into a Web3 world where everything is P2P, everything is peer-to-peer, -peer, we have to have the infrastructure side right. know, to be enabling that. Yeah, right. to power right. that. Yeah. And how does the AI work with the blockchain? Like, why? How, well, that's it. How does it work with the blockchain? Right. So, um, AI and blockchain is so called two different worlds, right? Um, one is completely really centralized, one is completely, I mean, the vision is to be decentralized. So, the way we apply AI is basically on the infrastructure layer, on the routing, you know, and then potentially into our GPU transcoding, right? So, it's very technical. Uh, but I also give you a bit more color um, since this year uh, with I've already tasked uh, my the AI team to build a AI solution for the blockchain. And what it entails is basically decentralized compute because we're in a compute business. Right. Think of it that way. Right. We're in the compute of storage, delivery, uh, transcoding, right? two of which is down, two out of three. And the AI team, which is separate from blockchain team, are now tasked with a huge uh, vision, which is how do we build a decentralized AI, uh, whereby uh, models, right, that sci AI scientists build, how do we keep them into a decentralized way, yet having it encrypted, right? No, nobody wants to upload uh, an algorithm and then it's open up for free, you know, and then there's no value to the person who is uploading it, right? But yet um, we keep it secure and yet. Um, we perform the output, the requirement that the model requires, right? Okay. So that's, I believe AI, if it's on blockchain, on a decentralized way, will be towards this direction, decentralized AI on a compute level. Yeah. Okay, all right. And so, so then what, what it works out in terms of the transcoding, this, this is how I understand it, right? So like uh, information packages can go this way or this way or this way or this way or this way, for example, and then the AI can calculate which is the mo where is it most needed and which is the most efficient. Should it go this way? Should it go this way? Should it get? Would that be correct? Like a very basic. Yes. Yeah. Very basic is definitely. <laughs> you know, we, we we route the best uh, files. I mean, the the optimal file to the bandwidth that is sufficient to capture that file. Right. We cannot so stuff the channel, right? So we, if if it's a very big, uh, I would say the bandwidth, the pipe is large. We give a better resolution. If the bandwidth is lower, we we want to give it a lower file. I mean, that's right. a very simple way of this. Explaining yes, it, yeah. we need to keep it simple. Otherwise, I'm yeah. going to get completely lost, right? And when, you, when are you launching the project? Like in terms of when can people use these applications? Mm. So currently, we're at a level where stage where we have enabled the Cosmos SDK. We are connected to IBC. Very soon, we'll connect to the Gravity Bridge, which allows the full EVM compatibility. And then we're also building out a middleware infrastructure layer, which, by, which is an S3 compatible service and also IPFS service compatible. So later on, dev developers can then build on top of that and uh, build, like let's say, a Dropbox a storage solution. And for the IPFS protocol that we've enabled, um, developers can build an NFT platform that requires an IPFS protocol. Right. Yeah. Right. And for people who don't know, IPFS is a decentralized protocol that's already there. It's older than blockchain. And I don't know, is that what BitTorrent uses or it's a different one? Uh, yeah, slightly different. Slightly different, it's, okay. It's, yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. I know PeerTube is on IPFS set, IPFS, and then there'll be other um, decentralized protocols that have nothing to do with blockchain that are on IPFS. And it's old, right. it's established, it's robust, like BitTorrent, like Bitcoin. Okay. Now, you've been going for, for a while, you've said. Good. I didn't know that. How have you been funding yourself? Right. So uh, two years ago, we did an IDO. 2021 in April, mm -hmm. uh, and we've used the funds from there as well. And also, I funds from 
my main company, which is AIOZ, right, which is in AI and also in blockchain. So that's how we've been funding ourselves. Right. Okay. And how does AI, what does AIOZ stand for? AI is artificial intelligence. Yes. And so, the OZ? Right. Allow me to share with you. So yep. um, the meaning of AIOZ, it means uh, A to Z, input and output, AI first. Right. So yeah, input output is a very basic computing sort of look. Uh, vocabulary so okay. it, it is something that we wanted to merge together a to z means that we would code anything we would do everything you know we developers are you know so that's oh, okay, what okay. it actually means so i o in the middle is input output and then a to z at the tail end from here to there right covering everything and then ai at the beginning oh very clever artificial intelligence now i got it okay all right thank you now um airdrops because I missed the idea, right? And one of the things that happens in the Cosmos ecosystem is companies grow by airdrops. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering, and I'm sure people are familiar with the Cosmos ecosystem are going to be wondering, will you be having an airdrop? Uh, yes, Rich. So at the moment, we are not planning any yet. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps after some studies or some thoughts, you know, uh, we'll give it some studies. Uh, for the moment, we don't have that. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody wants to get involved in your project, they want the AOS tokens, how would they get some? Yes. So um, there are two ways. One is to participate by being part of the ecosystem, uh, downloading the application, and you'll be rewarded with the tokens uh, for providing the computational resources. And the second way, of course, is currently available in the various decks and sex uh, on that side of the world. It's in ERC and uh, as well as in uh, Binance Smart Chain. Right, but not yet on the Cosmos ecosystem because you've not... Not yet. Yes. Not yet. Okay. And then once it is, it'll be available, I imagine, on Osmosis. Right, we will probably have to open up the channel to Osmosis or the decks that's available at that time, and yes, open it up. Okay, so three layers. Okay, and various central centralized exchanges, and they can also get it on Uniswap and I imagine Pancake Swap. Yes, that's right. Very good. And and at some point, Frontier, once you enable that. That's right. Okay. All right. And then you said people can download the application and get rewarded in the tokens. Is that something they can do now? Sure. I mean, if you have a Windows base, you have a uh, Mac OS or Ubuntu, the application is available right now. Uh, right. All we ask is to keep the bandwidth open. Um, that's so that very important. I got to, I got to keep, keep keep my computer on. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And then I download the the application, and then I'm going to be rewarded in tokens for the bandwidth that I'm allowing the network to use. Mm -hmm. Now, will that slow my computer down? Um, well, that's what. I think a lot of questions are being asked. So we basically use unused resources. Right. We're not using a used resource. Anyways, we cannot use that, which is already used. So we're only using something that's unused, right? So um, essentially, we're maximizing the full potential of every device. Right. Okay. So if, for example, I'm using, I don't know, 60% of my, is it ROM? Is that the one? Or RAM, is it right. RAM. RAM. Right. right. If I'm using sixty percent of my RAM, you may be using forty. You may use the re remaining forty percent. But let's say I up it to eighty percent that I'm using, then you'll use it, lower yours to twenty percent. That's right. Okay. But doesn't doesn't that increase the risk of the computer jamming or getting slow? Mm, I mean, the computer itself is a CPU is a very smart device. It automatically calibrates itself, and then we follow the computer bio system, everything, the protocol. Okay. It's not like um, we will stuff it and, and make the computer unworkable <laughs> or okay. just completely uh, smoke it. I don't think that it will. <laughs> Do you know, that, that's a very good answer, right? Because someone like me who's not technical, uh, right. well, okay, to me it seems like a very clever question, but it feels like, no, right? But, it, but it, your answer makes complete sense because if you were to do that, well, the the project wouldn't succeed. It would fail, right? Somebody would download and say, oh my God, my computer's blown up. Well, that's pretty much the end of the project. So you've refined it. You use it in such a way that it's efficient for the person who's downloaded the application and that they they get rewarded in tokens, which I suppose are then immediately liquid. And then they, Okay. Now, how are the tokens created? What's the tokenomics of the project? Mm, right. So... Uh... Currently, we have about, um, in the IDO, we have about 1 billion tokens issued, mm -hmm. and then we have a 9% inflation, which are for stakers and for uh, validators, yes. Okay, and where, where can people stake it? Uh, it yes, we have, 
Yes. So if a person, a user has tokens, they can go to our AOS network, the wallet, and stake with the, I think we currently have about 50 validators available. Right, right. Okay. Okay. That's interesting for an EVM machine, uh, EVM compatible. compatible project that is yes, stakeable. Okay. On Cosmos SDK, yes. Yes, but it's okay. All right, but you're not yet in the Cosmos ecosystem interoperable fully yet. Okay, yeah. but you can stay. I mean, to... well, we have already connected the IBC layer to the Cosmos mm -hmm. hub. The relayer is already uh, touched. We've already connected. So now uh, the way Cosmos requires every project is to open relayers. So we need to open it up. And also we're taking step-by-step -step approach. Um, we care about security very much. Uh, we're very concerned about security, to be honest. Um, so... Yeah. Give it time. We want uh, the system to be mature itself, and we will take the necessary steps. Yeah, right. Okay, w which makes complete sense because um, w when would you say your project started? I would say 2018, 2017, 2018, even before. 2018, yeah. Okay, which ma and it makes complete sense for you to go slowly, 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 because that's that's what it takes to build a business. Really, that has lasting power. So, like. Yes. Slowly, 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 you know, forward, slowly, 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 versus what people want in crypto. I want Lambo now. <laughs> no, no, that's not what it takes to build a viable long term business. <laughs> For that, you might want a coin with a dog or a frog on its face. <laughs> OK. All right. And you said security is really important. How? How do I know that the you know I open up my bandwidth and everything that my computer is not going to get infected with all sorts of uh, nonsense and right. ransomware and spyware and things? Yeah, great question. So uh, number one, the files that being uh, spliced uh, that comes to the device are all encrypted. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, so-called ransomware or um, I would say spying or hacking that requires a user actions. FYI. So that means a user typically needs to click on a file and it activates. It doesn't necessarily activate on its own, right? Okay. So if there is no user interaction, with, first of all, it's encrypted. The user, no matter what clicks on it, it cannot even get to the file. That's the first. Second, it also requires the user to go in and really click it, and then the file gets activated. So none of which is going to occur on our network. Yeah. Right, OK. Okay, right. yeah, and, and as a general warning for people, because I do get, and I'm sure you do get spam emails, right? I mean, yeah. I'm getting emails about, um, so it could be any hardware wallet, but I'm getting ones for Trezor, and this is no disrespect to Trezor at all, right? It's people capitalizing on that name and saying, oh, oh, we found an error in your balance. We'd like to send you some XRP, right? So yeah. click on this link, and then we can send you the right balance. And then, of course, I don't click on that link. I report it as spam because it, because if I took that action, then who knows what it's going to download. Right. So, my right. so typically it's a social engineering. And yeah. that's where it requires users to actually click on a link. So it's always best to type in the address that the user wants to go to on, a, on the user-owned uh, keyboard. Yeah. yeah. And I would say even before you do that, because one of the ways that I tell is, you know, if I look at where it's been sent from, that's not the Trezor website. <laughs> That's not the Trezor website. Yeah, it's yeah. some made up name with Trezor in the middle or something. Yes. yes okay. So, okay, so that's useful. All right. And then somebody, I could, after this video, if I wanted to go to your website, aoiz.network, download the application and start earning crypto straight away by sharing my bandwidth. Absolutely. That's what we want. And the more users participate, the more robust our system will be and it'll be more decentralized, more bandwidth to share. And okay. I think the dApps will uh, basically have a better experience and you, in turn, the you and me, the users, will also get a, I would say, the effect from it, the network effect. Yeah. Right. Now, for the uploaders, do they need to pay in AOIZ tokens or when you do the live streaming? Because what's mm -hmm. the economy for the tokens? Right. So that will be at the dApp level. So the debt has to um, pay, I would say, the middleware service, right? So the tokens in tokens, and of which the middleware will then need to reward these nodes with tokens for providing the services. Right. Okay. And then a, a debt that once it's set up could then go to a dex or a sex to purchase the token. Yes. And they're able yes. to. But why would they do that? Why Why won't they just go to another platform or another system? 
to build it right. up. You're right. So um, dApps can actually use a centralized way currently available, which is the Web2, or they can go and be completely Web3 by having a Web3 infrastructure participating with them, right? So currently the Web3s, they typically have AWS or GCP or Microsoft Azure of the likes, right? To power the entire ecosystem, which is fuck good, which is very, very strong and powerful and it works, you know? So for us too, uh, it's, a, it's, a nice, it's a new technology, I mean, new way of communicating and expressing this so-called peer-to-peer sharing, right? So that is basically uh, the vision of Web3. Right? So it is a full circle, yeah. Okay, but what's the business case for a DAP? Because that's what they're going to be interested in. You know, AWS and the other services, they're established, mm. they're possibly secure, right? But, they, you know, they're centralized, but they are established and reliable and yeah. people know them and everything, right? So why would shouldn't adapt just build on that why come to aiz network mm, right so um the one of the selling points for the network is basically cost we're definitely definitely more cost efficient than a centralized version that's one so they can have enormous cost savings uh, right. by building on top of us because by default if you think about it um the costs are distributed across all the peers right right and the supplies and distributors. So the cost itself is really lower. They don't pay us, the EOS that they the, the devs have to reward and pay the tokens to the, the nodes. Whoever participate, you and me, whoever device that participate, they are the ones getting it. Yeah. Right. So obviously later on we want to build a middleware infrastructure too, whereby we create more and more value, more and more utility. So currently we're going to build an S3 compatible storage, which creates utility, the IPFS uh, enabler, enabler, right, protocol also. So it creates utility. So from there, and then potentially in the future we will create another DAP, you know, in the likes of a decentralized YouTube or decentralized TikTok or Instagram. We will also push forth because um, currently we have one DAP. Well, it's a proof of concept. It's called mm-hmm. AOS.tube. If you like, you can just understand it. Uh, basically, it's a very, very, very raw right, um, website, but its, it's uh, function is clear. The files on the website are all distributed across all the nodes. And currently, you and I, whoever da- download the application at this stage, is basically powering this AOS.tube at the moment. So um, that's essentially what we're doing. Because uh, if we don't build the AOS.tube, if you think about it, and the device is downloaded, downloading the application, there is no uh, function, right? There's no tube, there, there's nothing to push the media and it becomes, you know, redundant. So we needed to build a vertically approach to explain to the world what we do, yeah, in a sense. So that's why it took us years because we're building so many cogs in, in the system uh, to make sure it works. And, yeah. then later, and, and that was two years ago, we built the entire system up Vertical, vertical approach. Now we go back and focus on the infrastructure layer where we're ready, you know, we're building up slowly but surely and then we push up again one more time. Right, okay. Upwards. Yeah. Very good. All right, and then how are you going to get the word out? One, to um, people who, who are going to make their um, bandwidth available, but also to businesses and projects that might be interested in building dApps. How right. are they going to find out so, about you? Yeah, so we definitely have to market ourselves uh, to devs very important to explain to them what is the benefit or why should you build on top of AOS network because we are the Web3 infra for you, right? right. But the cost is definitely lower. We have to participate in events. We have to go on the social media. We have to explain ourselves so that they create awareness. Even speaking with you, Rich, is also getting awareness to your viewers that we exist. We are a project. What we do, you know, please DYOR, um, understand better essentially what is the main gist of what we're trying to build? Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. So just to sum up, you're building a Web 3.0 AI enabled infrastructure layer for decentralized, for people, peer-to-peer file sharing, information sharing, storage, and st- streaming. And these projects can build decentralized applications on your decentralized layer at lower cost and greater efficiency than existing Web 2.0 providers. And then individuals like myself and others watching this can earn crypto AIZ tokens just for sharing redundant spare capacity on their CPUs, which increases 
the decentralization of this project. Well, that doesn't sound too shabby. <laughs> now, if people want to find out and they want to get involved, what should they, apart from watching this video and just subscribing to my channel, what should they do? Where should they go? Sure. Yes, please uh, visit AIOZ.network. Uh, it gives you a bit more color, a bit more information, and also the application to download from according to your device OS. Right, okay. And then also, I'll have the links in the description below for the website, but also the Telegram and Twitter group. And I do recommend um, people check this out. I'm thinking, okay, I need to, I need to get my, uh, I've got a spare laptop. I need to get that up and running. <laughs> Right. Please do. Sitting in yeah, the corner. We need every right? one device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need yeah. every single device out there. Yeah. That's right. But, the, but then I'll be like ticking over, collecting AOIZ tokens. So another passive income project, which I yes. like. Very, very useful. Um, is there anything you want to say before we finish up? No, man, anything we haven't covered? Yeah. So I want to thank everyone, if your viewers, yourself, you know, for allowing, uh, giving me the opportunity to explain the project, you know, uh, in earnest. And I will also request your viewers to DYOR, you know, to really, really understand first, right? Uh, what, with all the different projects out there, I know everyone is uh, trying to comprehend, you know? So I think, thank you very much you know, for your time as well to your viewers for listening and hearing together. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, and everybody's watching. Uh, links in the description below. If you have any comments or questions, go on, post some comments. Give me, give me the ticker symbol. If you're watching this video and you stayed where all the way through this, right? Please do me a favor and give me the ticker symbol for AOIZ, which is AOIZ. That could be your comment. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, Erman, thank you. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with crypto profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Erman signing out. All the best. Bye-bye.